This tutorial covers creating new products and assigning product attributes in the WooCommerce e-commerce system for WordPress. As usual, we're going to begin at our dashboard right after we log into our website. On the left-hand side, move your mouse cursor over to WooCommerce. Directly below this tab, you're going to see products. In the menu that pops out to get started, we're going to select Add Product. This screen that displays gives us a blank canvas in which to create a new product. To begin with, let's name our product. We're going to be selling an iPod Nano. The large text box at the top is the product description, the long form, that displays toward the bottom of the product page in your store. Go ahead and type up your description, whatever you'd like and then look directly below this text field. The first option that we see is what type of product data we're creating. For most products that are created, you're going to select Simple Product. To the right, you see Virtual or Downloadable. Virtual and downloadable products generally only apply to electronic files such as MP3s and videos. If you're not sure what these are, it's best to leave them unchecked. Under General, you have some pretty straightforward options. If you have a SKU number, an in-house product number, go ahead and enter that here. Under Regular Price, you're going to type in the price with a decimal and two trailing digits that this product normally sells at. If this product normally retails for $250, you can't enter the price like this. You have to enter a decimal plus two zeros. The system will not work properly if you fail to enter the two trailing digits after the decimal. Sale price has a couple of options. If we're going to sell this for $200 on sale, after entering the full price, I have the option to set a schedule. Is this product only going to be on sale for a week? If it is, I can click Schedule and I can select the beginning date as today and the ending date as a week from now. Because the ending date is the 24th of January, on January 24th the system will automatically revert to the regular price. The customers will no longer be able to buy this item on sale. The field below this is weight. Weight is going to be configured however your designer has set the site up for you. For the demo purpose, it's under kilograms, but yours is most likely pounds or ounces. Go ahead and enter the weight in a full decimal form. If it's a one kilogram product, I can't just enter the one. I have to enter the one and the decimal with the two trailing zeros. Dimensions? What are the sizes of your product? Ours are in centimeters. If the length is 5 centimeters, I enter 5.00. If the width is 2 centimeters, I'll enter 2.00. And if the height is 7 centimeters, I'll enter that here. Custom fields are best left blank. Scrolling all the way to the bottom, you'll see the short product description. This is the text that appears next to the product image at the top of the product page in your store. Enter any relevant information about selections that the customer may have to make with this product. Because we're going to offer this iPod in different hard drive sizes, I've made that note here. Let's scroll back up toward the top. Under the Product Data heading, we see another tab called Taxes. If this product is eligible for taxes, I need to make sure that Taxable is selected. If you don't want to charge tax, select None. If you don't want to charge tax for this product, but they still have to pay tax on the shipping, select Shipping Only. This means that the tax will not be applied to the iPod, but the tax will be applied to the shipping for the iPod. 
Because I want customers to pay tax on this item, I'm going to select Taxable. Tax class is best left at standard. The next tab is Inventory. The first option is Manage Stock. If I want to be able to enter in how many of this iPod that I have in stock, I can select this checkbox, and then I'll have the option Enter in the Stock Quantity. If I only have 60, I enter in 6 and 0. The next field is whether or not the product is in stock. I can leave this set at 60, but if I won't have 60 iPods in until next week, I can change this to out of stock so customers can't order it right now. Then next week when my 60 iPods come in from my distributor, I can change this back to in stock, allowing customers to order. Allow back orders is an important field to keep in mind. Most of the time we recommend leaving the set at do not allow. This means that if the product is out of stock, customers cannot add it to their cart and check out. If you have this set to allow but notify customer or allow, you're going to allow the customers to purchase this product even though it's out of stock, and then you're just going to have to remember to ship it to them once it's in stock. The next field is shipping. We recommend leaving this blank and not assigning a shipping class unless we've set those up for you and reviewed how those work when you engaged in a product or project with us. Under related products, these are generally calculated automatically without you having to enter in any information. Your web developer should have automatically set up related products to display to the customer beside or below the product in your store so that no further work is required on your part. Attributes. Attributes are important for this. Because we're selling this iPod in multiple hard drive sizes, we need to add those hard drive sizes here, under the Attributes tab. To get started, we're going to look to the right, and we see this drop-down field that says Custom Product Attribute. By clicking on Custom Product Attribute, we see all the attributes that are available to us. Color, brands, size, hard drive size. Well, since we're offering this in multiple hard drive sizes, I'm going to select hard drive size. Then I'll select Add. As you can notice, now a new field has popped up called hard drive size. The checkbox that says visible on the product page is best left unchecked. For values, we're going to enter in the hard drive sizes that are available. The system is going to produce a list of available hard drive sizes just by clicking in this box where it says Select Terms. So click in this box, and now select the hard drive sizes you want. We're going to sell it in 30, 64 gigabytes, and by clicking again, we're going to select the last option for 32 gigabytes. Now we need to make sure that we check the box that says visible on the product page. This is going to give customers the option to select either 32 or 64 gigabytes for this iPod. Now this is going to seem a little bit confusing, but unfortunately it's a necessary evil. We have another step. At the top of this box we see the field again called product data. Remember how we set that to simple product? Well, a simple product doesn't have multiple options because it's simple, but because we're going to give this iPod multiple options for the customer, we need to change this from simple product to variable product because it has variations. After changing this to variable product, you may be taken back to this tab that says general. Go back over to the attributes tab. Make sure that this bottom checkbox is ticked that says used for variations. Next, we're going to skip over the advanced tab and we're going to go right to variations. We'll come back to advanced in a moment. Under variations, you may miss this field, but directly under where it says bulk edit prices, there's a drop down that says default selections. Changing this 
means that the default configuration for this product can be 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes because I've assigned both of those as attributes to this product. We're going to leave this set no default hard drive size. I've just clicked the box that says Add Variation on the right hand side. It was a blue button. This provides us with another field that says Any Hard Drive Size. Well, 32GB and 64GB hard drives are different prices, so we need to configure one of these boxes for each size. But let's say you weren't configuring options that affected the price. Let's say that both hard drive sizes were the same. Well, if that's the case, you need to go ahead and enter your stock quantity here and the price. Shipping class, you'd leave blank. Sale price, you could configure. And we've already entered in the dimensions, so those already apply. But for price, it was $250, and the sale price was $200. If this was all I was doing, and I wasn't assigning different prices for each variation, I can ignore the next two steps. But if you're creating different prices for different options, meaning one option is one price, and another option is another price, then pay close attention. Again, I'm going to click this button that says Add Variation. If I have a specific SKU number for the first hard drive size, I'll enter it right here. At the top of this box, I see Any Hard Drive Size. I need to change this to 32 gigabytes because I'm going to assign a price for this first option. The 32 gigabyte hard drive is $250. If it has a sale price, I'll enter it here. Now I need to enter in my price for my 64 gigabyte hard drive. So I'm going to again click on Add Variation. And under this Next heading, I'm going to select 64 gigabytes enter in the quantity if that applies, and for the price, I'll enter that here. The price for the 64 gigabyte hard drive is $350. If it was on sale, I would add that here. If it had a different weight than the 32 gigabyte model, I can enter that here. The same with the dimensions. Again, shipping class and tax class I'm going to leave blank. The very last field is default selections. We covered that just a couple of minutes ago, but again, make sure it's set to no default hard drive size. The next step is to take a look at this Advanced tab. In the Advanced tab, you can enter a purchase note. If I was running behind in my deliveries, I could add a note here that would display to a customer after they purchased an iPod. After they bought an iPod, this note would let them know that delivery may be delayed by one day. If I don't want to send them a note after they've made a purchase, I can delete this. Menu order is best left blank. Make sure Enable Reviews is checked if you'd like customers to be able to review your products. The last two items we're going to be covering are on the right-hand side of the screen. Under the Publish or Update button is a field called Product Categories. Well, this is an iPod, which is an electronic device. Since I've already created a category that's called electronics, I'm going to select that, meaning that my iPod is in the electronics department of my store. If I have had multiple categories this applied to, for instance, if I had electronics and I had computers, and I wanted to sell the iPod in both departments, I would check the computers category. Down at the bottom here, I have an option called Featured Image. This is going to be the picture of the product that I'm selling. I click on Set Featured Image, and I'm presented with my media library. 
Since I've already uploaded a picture of the iPods I'm going to be selling, I can just insert the image. If you need to upload an image to your store, use the upload link in the upper left hand corner. After I've highlighted an image, I go to the right hand side of the screen and configure all available fields. Then I select set featured image. Now that I've set everything up the way I want to, I can click this blue button on the right hand side. It's either going to say publish or update. Go ahead and click it. At the center top of the page, this yellow status notification, I see that my product has been updated and I have the option to view it. By clicking view product, I'll be taken to the completed iPod and you can see all the options I've configured. It's from $250 and the customers have an option to choose a hard drive size. 32 gigabytes is six or is $250. The 64 gigabyte is $350. The long description I entered is down here, and the short description that displays next to the picture is here. My product image is located right here. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you still have questions, feel free to navigate to our contact us page for additional support.